So I'm ready for some dinosaur texturing. And I have set up my textures ready for painting, but I'll take you through that. So I'm going to go to the texture paint workspace, which is at the top here. And it goes all blue because I think I must have had my normal map selected. And I will pull out a new window and change that to the shader editor, which used to be called the node editor. So here's my texture and I'm going to create a new texture now. I'll talk you through my setup in a second, but I'll just create a new texture for painting. And I don't actually have to do it down here. I can do it in the painting workspace. So if I click on my brush, I can come over to here and it has my two textures, the normals and the cavity, and I can create a new one there. And it's going to be base color. I'll change it to 2048 by 2048. And I'll give it a base green actually, because I know I'm going to do a greenish color somewhere around there, I think. And I can get rid of the alpha as well. If I do any details, I can layer it up and use an alpha and bake them out afterwards, but I'll go through that later. So I'll press okay and it all turns green. And it's got my texture here. Normally it would plug it straight into the base color, but because I've got something attached already, it's not doing that, but it has selected it. So I'm going to go through my textures now. In fact, I'll just change this one first, Dino base color so we can see it all. I'll press control space so you can see my node editor and obviously the normals into the normals. And this is the way you set up a cavity map. So you've got the cavity map, you go into a color ramp. If you want to increase it or decrease it, you can change the sliders here. I've got it there ready. I'm going to pull it back. I was just doing that for rendering. So it shouldn't be any change. So it's as if it's going straight into the bottom color slot. And the factor of one will be fully the bottom one, but it's on an overlay mode. And the overlay means that the black bits will become darker and the white bits become lighter. So anything you have set up with your color, this will just make it darker and lighter. Hence the idea of this sort of grunge cavity map. You get to this overlay with a mix RGB. So shift A, color, and there's a mix RGB there. And you can then change it to the overlay. And then you plug your cavity into the bottom, put the factor up to one, and then anything I plug in, which this color, for example, if I plug that in now and go back to my model, it will make it all green. Now, at the moment, we can only see the texture. And that's quite handy in some ways, but it frustrated me for ages. Under the overlays, you have an opacity, so you can see your other textures coming through. I just had a very slight glitch there, so I've actually unplugged my normal map for now. It does seem a touch glitchy, the painting modes at the moment. It may be because I've got quite a lot hooked up. But it does the main, but the major glitch for me seems to always be in the normal map somehow. It's not necessary in this case, because I have got my cavity to guide me. And I can go into my overlays and increase the full texture or go more to the paint mode. And I quite like to have it somewhere around here just so I can see where I'm painting on these weird details, but also so I can see my texture in full and see how much color I'm putting on. Because obviously when we go to fully here, we've got the influence of all the lights and the glossiness and everything like that as well. So this is how I'm going to paint on it. I'm gonna make sure my base color is selected and it's coming up in here. Just quickly do a test which seems to be working. And I'm going to go in and start blocking out the colors I want to use. Now this green is fine. And if you can't see your workspace, then you just click on the brush again and the workspace comes back up. I like this green in many ways. So I'm going to sample it. So I press S and then click on the color and it will come up in my color palette down here. I'm going to get sort of variations of this, maybe something like this, just sort of see what they look like and grab a few different variations so we can have different areas of his skin with different colors. And I'm gonna have a sort of whitish middle here, but a whitey yellowy sort of beige color. Let's color that in for now and see what that looks like. In fact, I'll undo that because I've forgotten to turn symmetry on and it's still symmetrical. So we can still use the mirror. If I do pose this, I should still be able to use the mirror as long as I don't apply the pose. So now it's mirroring nicely, getting a touch of lag. It's far too shiny this at the moment but I'm going to give it a glossy map and paint that on later as well. You change your strength and radius up here, or you use F and Shift F. And you'll notice if I color things in, I still have those bubbles around the place because I've still got that cavity map. That's why these maps, baking them out, makes it easier for painting. The teeth aren't connected, so I'm just drawing underneath them nice and easily. That's the reason I didn't connect them. 
I just thought this stage would be a lot easier. And already he's looking nice and fun. I'm going for sort of pastel colours. What I mean by that is I'm going quite close. They're quite soft colours. These are very saturated and these are unsaturated the more you, you go into the middle of this circle. And I'm using sort of unsaturated colours and they look quite pastely, I would say. That's an expression I use for them anyway. And that tends to be quite nice for cuddly, cartoony characters. Going to go slightly more sort of yellowy for the claws. See what that looks like. Slightly gone over this bit. I should be a bit more careful, really. But I'm just blocking in colours at the moment. Remember to sample this one. And that's not working. Is that a glitch? There it is. <laughs> Get rid of these ones. And now I'm going all over the place at the moment. It's actually easier to sort of paint in the green areas afterwards if I overlap slightly. Because I've done that cavity mask, it means all these areas are darker and it acts like a multiply or a darken. So I don't need to do that sort of shading. And can you sort of see that white glow here? That's the cavity mask again. Now in some ways you could argue it would have been better for me to pose the model first before painting, just in case there's any sort of stretching and things. But I just really fancy getting on with some painting. <laughs> I don't think it matters too much, but maybe I'll regret saying that a bit later on when I go to pose the model. Very slight overly done in the cavity mask there. Should be fine from about this distance, as you can see. Not quite sure why that glitch is there. If you need to sort out glitches like this, which I think is something to do with my multi-resolution modifier, but if you need to sort that glitch out, you can paint onto your cavity mask. So if I select the cavity mask now, is that gonna mess things up? I'll save it. Make sure you save your images regularly. And let's change this to Dino Cav. Dino Cav. And Dino Cav, let's see if this is going to work now. Can I now modify this? Yes, I can. <laughs> Did go back to the base color though. So now I can use the smudge and just smudge out that area a little bit, that sort of cavity mask area. That seems to be working just. There might be actually a slight issue with the model. It looks like the normals or something have gone a bit weird around here. But it is still painting on them, so it must be okay. If you're finding it's painting on the reverse of your object, then the normals are the wrong way around. But there does seem to be something very slightly wrong on those claws, these two. In fact, those three, which is annoying. These tiny glitches. Could have happened from instant mesh, actually. Let's go back to the base color. Oh, it changed in here as well, that's nice. Changing up here just to be sure. And hopefully I can just change and work on the base color. You can tell I'm fairly new to painting in 2.8. I've done a bit of it, but a bit isn't always enough, is it? So that's the best way to start, block in some colour like that. In the next episode, I will be going through how to paint on layers. So non-destructive layer-based painting.